In this video, we're going to be showing you how to change the spark plugs and spark plug wires on a Chevy 6.0 liter engine. And we're going to be showing you how to do it right after this. Hey guys, Alex here with All For Him Racing. Today we are going to be changing the spark plugs and spark plug wires on a Chevy 6.0 liter engine. We are underneath the hood right now of my 2012 Chevy Silverado. This procedure that we're using will apply to a number of newer and later models. Please be aware that from year to year and from model to model there may be slight variances. First step is to identify the tools that you will need to make the repair. The tools we're going to use for this repair are a standard 3 8 socket wrench, a short extension, a 5 8 spark plug socket, universal joint, and a standard pair of needle nose pliers. Those are the tools that will be featured in this video. And despite being just over six foot tall, a small step ladder is never a bad idea for better access into the truck. As with any repair, you need to make sure that you purchase the right replacement parts. So in this case, we went with the original OEM AC Delco products. For the wires, we selected the 9748UU. And for the plugs, we purchased the 41162 series spark plugs. These are iridium plugs, not platinum. That was what was recommended for this motor, and there are benefits with using iridium over platinum. Be sure to research that for yourself. I'll provide links in the description below for these replacement parts, so be sure to check them out. And as always, make sure to check the fitment for your vehicle to make sure that they will fit your make, model, and year. Now that we have the tools and parts ready to go, now all that is left is to do the work. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna locate the first cylinder and start there. Now for ease of visibility, we're actually gonna start with the second cylinder back. We're gonna start with this one first. Uh, the candid observer might realize that there's actually something going on with these other two wires. And that's the whole reason for this project is uh, the squirrel decided to get in my engine bay and uh, chew up two of my spark plug wires, causing us to have to make this repair. But for the ease of visibility, we're gonna start with the second cylinder back. First step is you need to remove your wire, always grabbing the boot and not actually grabbing the wire itself. Now there is a heat shield that is down here and we're going to use a pair of needle nose pliers gripping the shield and pulling the boot off the plug. Just like that. To remove the plug you're going to take a standard socket wrench with an extension and a 5 8 spark plug socket and we're going to use this to remove the plug. Simply slide the socket over the plug, make sure it is seated firmly on the plug, and then you can go ahead and torque that out. Eventually it becomes too loose to use the socket, in which you can just remove it by hand on the extension, and then remove the plug, being careful not to lose it in the engine bay. As you can see, that spark plug is definitely used and needs to be replaced. With the old and the new spark plugs side by side, you'll see that the part numbers do not match. On the old plug, you'll see a 41110, and on the new plug, you'll see a 41162. If you do a little bit of Google search, and you'll find out that the 41162 became the standard replacement for the 41110. So just because these do not match, you still have the proper replacement part. Now I'm going to answer a question before you even have a chance to ask. We will not be using anti-seize on the threads today. New standards for spark plugs require that there be a coating on the threads if they are in fact shiny, such as these are. They are already coated, so they will not seize into your heads. If they are black anodized or some other coating, you will need to use anti-seize. So you will need to research your application before starting a project. Today, threads are shiny on the spark plug, so we will not be using anti-seize. Now the one nice thing about today's plugs is they also come pre-gapped, which means that the gap at the very base of the plug will already be set per the manufacturer's recommendations, so you will not have to re-gap these plugs. If you want to, you can simply check them with a gap standard tool that you can pick up at any automotive store. 
However, with platinum and iridium plugs being the rare earth tips that they are, you do not want to regap if at all possible because you do risk breaking the tip. Now you need to grab the new plug and insert it into your socket. And we will be starting this by hand. You always should start spark plugs and any bolt by hand. Line it up with the cylinder head, a light turn backwards until it seats, and then go ahead and screw the spark plug in as far as you can by hand. Once it becomes snug, reach for your socket wrench, put it onto the extension, make sure you're tightening, and tighten it until snug. Now before you can install your new plug wire, you must first put grease in the boot. Your standard wire kits will come with the grease and simply take a Q-tip, apply a little bit of grease to the very tip of it. Now try to use a hardy mount, try to ration it out properly, and then simply take your Q-tip, put the grease in the end of the boot, and do a circular pattern making sure to get all the sidewall that is exposed before the connector has grease. Next, you need to remove the shield from your old boot. In this case, it simply slides out. There's the old boot and here's your heat shield. And we're going to take this shield and slide it over the end of our new boot. With those steps, this cable is now ready to be installed. Now we're gonna take our new wire and we're going to do the bottom boot first. We're gonna slide it over the spark plug, making sure the shield is properly aligned, and we're gonna push till we hear a nice firm pop. Now we're gonna take the top half, we're gonna do the same thing and place this wire back on the coil waiting for a nice pop. And with that, you have changed one of eight cylinders. Now all that's left to do is to work through the rest of them. Now just continue to work your way around. In this case, I'm just gonna speed things up by removing a lot of the old parts. In this case, the wires that were damaged, as well as these lower heat shields. Now if you don't want to do multiple cylinders at one time, you can simply just do one cylinder at a time. Now with that, we have changed the entire driver's side. Now we're gonna move over to the passenger side. Now if you don't want your hands looking all greasy and grimy and dirty like this, certainly an option is you can buy these latex mechanic style gloves, or just regular latex gloves will work as well, but these are a little bit more durable. You buy them on Amazon and some other places, I'll provide links to some that I would recommend. Never a bad idea, especially if you don't want your hands to look like this. So the passenger side is going to be the same process. We're simply gonna replace one spark plug at a time. And in this case, I think I might start from the back because that's gonna be the hardest one to get to. Now there's a nice heat shield down here. When you look at this with your own application, it's just really hard to get on camera. Uh, but there is a heat shield here down at the bottom and we're going to have to use one of these universal joints for your socket in order to make the bend. So we're gonna simply put this on the socket, make the bend around that shield, and then we'll be able to remove the spark plug. 
And unfortunately with it being tighter on the side it's also harder to film because we have more distractions in the way. But I'm still going to try to do my best to show you that operation. Now for this I've actually opted to use no extension and just the universal joint between the socket wrench and the socket. Now if you've changed that back wire, congratulations, you have completed the hardest part of this entire project. Now it's just a matter of doing the last three cylinders. And for the final step, enjoy the fruits of your labor. So there you go guys, hopefully that video was helpful to you. If it was, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you have not already done so. As I mentioned before, we will have links in the description for the replacement parts used in this video. Please make sure to check the fitment for your vehicle. As always here at Off Rim Racing, we hope that you guys have a great day, and until the next video, we'll talk to you later, guys.